All right, welcome to Lunchtime with Luke. In this video, I'm going to talk about why you should learn Latin. Maybe a little bit of how you should learn Latin, but why you should learn Latin. So Latin was actually the first language I learned. I mean, besides English, but the first language I actually sat down and learned. Um, I actually learned it, I guess I was around high school or something. I think I had arbitrarily signed up for a Latin class, but of course you never learn Latin from class or anything from class. Classes are useless, just drop out. Um, but I signed up for a class, a Latin class, just randomly because I had to take a language. And my dad gave me an old Latin book. It was like a hundred years old. I think it belonged to a grandfather or a great uncle or something like that. It was Collar Daniel's Latin or beginning Latin or something like that. And basically I ate that book up and I learned Latin really quick. And it was one of the best investments of my life. It's been, I guess, you know, 10 years nearly since that, maybe more. Um, and that is one of the things I just militantly do not regret. We'll just put it that way. And I want to explain why Latin was such a great thing. Now, first, let's talk about why, how either the ancients and how, how people several hundred years ago looked at Latin to sort of get, get at why it's worth learning. So, you know, medieval people, um, I guess sort of, you know, around a thousand or something like that, or even before that, they looked at Latin not really as being a language. It's important to remember. So, like, you didn't take everyone back then who was worth anything, and still today, learns Latin. Um, but they didn't learn it as in Latin classes. They learned it in grammar classes. Because how people back then looked at it, keep in mind that, you know, there are a bunch of languages that descend from Latin. Spanish and French and Italian and learning Latin is going to increase your understanding. It's going to make learning those languages absolutely facile. It's going to be the easiest thing in the world. But um, Latin wasn't really thought of as being the ancestor language back in the day. Latin was more thought of as an abstraction. You didn't take Latin classes. You took grammar classes because when you learned Latin, uh, people looked at it as being a, a more loyal reflection of the reality of grammar in the mind, in as a logical structure, and everything else. And there's a sense in which that is true. Now, there are some linguists nowadays who will pretend that all languages are equal and the same, and everyone should just hold hands and sing Kumbaya, but um, that's not true. La languages are very di different, and what separates Latin from a language like English or, you know, French and Italian and all the Romance languages is that, uh, you know, in the process of learning Latin, especially when you're learning it explicitly, you know, when... Well, if you compare learning the grammar of English or, you know, the garbage you learn in English class about grammatical rules or something like that, those all just seem like arbitrary things we, you know, force ourselves to do in English. And most of them are. Most of them do not matter for actually speaking English. Um, but when you study something like Latin or, you know, any kind of ancient language, Latin is probably the easiest ancient language for you to learn. Uh, but when you study a language like, like this and you see the massive amount of inflections, you see the morphology of it, you see, uh, the, you see um, the, gramma the grammatical aspects of the language make a lot of sense why they're there, what they actually do. They're not arbitrary like they are in English. Now, as I said a second ago, I do think that Latin is one of the easiest languages for you to learn as an English speaker, um, often because... You know, the, typically when you learn a language, now, if you're a normal person out there who doesn't know anything about learning languages, you might think that learning a language is an issue about learning a bunch of words. You know, learn, if you want to learn Spanish, you just learn the Spanish words for everything. That's not, that's not how it works. Um, it's really the grammatical inflections, how you actually say things, and actually working it in your head how to actually say and interpret things, not just learning words. In fact, learning the vocabulary is probably the least important aspect and probably the most annoying aspect because sometimes it requires a bunch of memorization. Now, the reason I say Latin is relatively easy is because Latin vocabulary is going to be very easy for you to learn as an English speaker. In fact, it's really hard to find a Latin word that there is not some English descendant of, or there's some uh, word that's changed and be, been reborrowed. All of the vocabulary you have in Latin, there's some kind of easy mnemonic device to learn it. So when you actually learn Latin, 
what you're doing, what you're at, the actual stuff you're adding to your brain that's making it quote unquote difficult, but really it's the edifying lear- learning portion, is you are learning the grammar per se. That is the rules behind it, what all these things, what dative case means, how it's actually used, what an ablative absolutive is. Um, you're learning about verbal inflections, how they're used. So you learn this sort of distilled grammar without a lot of effort. And what you come out with is a lot of knowledge, not just of an important ancient language that is actually extremely useful, and I'll talk about why, um, but you also learn, you also, it's basically the equivalent of getting at least an undergraduate degree in linguistics. In fact, since I, you know, know a bunch of linguistics graduate students, uh, I will tell you that one of the big divides for me, how I judge people, I mean, this isn't, this isn't like a prejudice. It's just after time I've realized that this is the case. There's a big divide in between who came through linguistics through, I don't know, so like reading a Steven Pinker book. Those guys are basically brainlets. Um, but who came to linguistics through Latin? Now, those are the big brain people. Those are the people who know what they're talking about. And they also have good intuitions when they're either learning languages or they're making generalizations about languages because often you learn Latin and you have this massive grammatical knowledge. You know basically all the, the terms you need to know, first off, to understand any kind of language. But Latin is oft, often a gateway drug to other drugs like classical Greek. Oh, I need some of that. I need my fix. Oh, I need to learn Sanskrit. Oh, man, I, let me get some of that in my veins. Oh, God, now I'm just going to learn Indo-European. It's going to be better and better. And each one gets easier and easier because the knowledge is more compounding. In fact, you know, when you get to something, when you get to something like learning, like learning, like Latin is nice and, you know, thousands of years of, of teaching it. We have gotten a very systematized. Learning Latin is pretty uh, easy or, or pretty, pretty systematized, pretty efficient you know, uh, but then you learn Greek and it's a little disorganized or Sanskrit is a little more disorganized if you learn it, you know, from an English book, but then you learn Indo-European and everything falls into place and everything works. Um, so anyway, right now I've, I've been making the case in terms of how it increases your knowledge. It makes you better generally as a mental habit, uh, to learn Latin, but it's also in terms of what is written in Latin, it is fantastic to know. Now, a lot of people will associate Latin with, you know, the classics. You can read the classics, and that, that's true. That's why a lot of people learn them. But I will say that for me, what has been far more useful is the stuff written after the classical era, the stuff that's written in the medieval period or the Renaissance period. And I say this because, you know, one thing, this is like Red Pill 101 about history the things you learn in history books are a very small segment of what's going on. When they're talking about the important uh, documents written, the important thinkers, all this kind of stuff, you're getting a, a like what people nowadays happen to remember. And that's going to change. In 10 years, that's going to change. 10 years ago, it was totally different. Um, so the reality is during this period, you know, let's say me, you know, when I was doing linguistics research, um, there, there are so many ideas that come up as we think, we think these formal ideas are totally new. We came up with these brilliant ideas. Um, but then you read these documents written in the medieval period and which are all written in Latin and there's no translation of them. There are a couple major works translated, but I'm talking about the, the real stuff that's hard to find. Um, you know, there's no, you read that kind of stuff and you realize how non-insane these people were that they pretty much saw everything that exists nowadays. It's already, they've already noticed it. They already know about it and it's there usually written in Latin. So there are all these kind of, there's so many times in my life where, um, you know, I, I look to these either medieval or sometimes Renaissance stuff written in Latin that there's no translation of, and there's not going to be a translation of, and you find all this great stuff. Um, someone I've talked about on my channel before is actually the economist Joseph Schumpeter. Now Schumpeter, he also knew Latin. I mean, he's not known for that, but he wrote a history of economic thought. I, f I forget exactly the, what the book's title was. I, it might have been History of Economic Thought, where he actually read some medieval and Renaissance literature written in Latin that really no one was out there. I mean, it was out there, but no one really knew about it because it was written in Latin. And he discovered all kinds of stuff. He dis discovered precedents to all kinds of modern ideas. Um, and that, so, you know, I think even Redditors know better to, than to say 
that there was a dark age. I think people understand that this, that's like a public, you know, a popular myth. There's no such thing as a dark age. People didn't forget things. People didn't, um, you know, at least intellectually. There were demographic changes, but there weren't intellectual changes. Really, just that entire period where people were la writing in Latin. Uh, modern people are just too dumb to read, oftentimes. And once you start reading it, you realize, wow, there's like an entire. It's like un. It's like un covering like another universe and seeing all this great stuff that's written in it and just being amazed that like so many people don't know it's out there you know some of the best works of western philosophy you know people think oh wow uh the classics are great or wow the enlightenment man that's like brainlet tier you know if you if you like that stuff but the scholastics man the middle in the middle ages those are the biggest brain people out there. And even if we don't remember a lot of these guys, they had a huge influence. And reading that stuff in Latin is great. So anyway, that's just been a minor thing. And keep in mind, I didn't you know, want to study any, any of that stuff when I learned Latin. I had no idea. I was doing it sort of for fun because I enjoyed it. Um, but once I did that, I realized, wow, there's all this stuff that um, is like quasi hidden, for, hidden from view, hidden from modern people. But it is... It's great, and you can get a whole lot of stuff out of it. And, I mean, I've only scratched the surface, even in terms of the, uh, the uh, fields that I'm, I've went in, uh, the fields that I'm interested in. So, anyway, I will say, how do I recommend learning Latin? Now, uh, I will say there is an advantage for some people to learning Latin because um, there are no speakers, native speakers of Latin. Uh, so, you don't have to, you know, if you're a little nervous about learning a language... Latin might be a good place to start because you don't have to worry about, you know, people laughing at you because basically everyone, I mean, it's rare for people to actually speak it. Some autistes do, uh, but it's rare for people to speak it and you don't need to feel like um, you can go at, as, go at it as mentalistically as possible if you want, if you prefer that method. Now, when I was learning Latin, I will say, you know, I was in a mindset, you know, Lat for a period Latin, you know, when I was around 16 or so, Latin... Um, just was like everything I did. I mean, I wasn't like that much of a nerd about it, but you know, when I was uh, out in the wild, I would, uh, if I heard a song, I, in my head, I would translate it into Latin just as a mental exercise. Or you have to, you, ha you have to sort of be in that state where you're starting to think in it. You're starting to really be able to use the language. Um, that I find that a very helpful mental habit. But in terms of what books to use to learn Latin, again, I think I mentioned at the beginning of the video. Uh, I learned Latin from Collar Daniel's book, which is around 100 years old. Um, in general, if you want to learn Latin or ancient Greek as well, or a classical language, get a book that was written at least 50 years ago. That would be nice because all of those books, they're all written in a, stand, a, a, a format that's obsolete because, you know, there's new stupid ideas about how languages should be taught. Um, but all of them, you know, have the format that worked for centuries and it's fantastic. You should look into them. You know, I, again, I use Collar Daniel, but I, I don't actually compared to all the other Latin books of that period. Uh, it's pretty normal. It's nothing that special. Um, there is one contemporary series that I do recommend and people have asked me about, I think I've mentioned on the channel before, and that is Hans Orberg's series, Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata, which means the Latin language taught through itself. Now, I don't know, I, I was introduced to this series after I began learning Latin. I don't know if you could only use this book, but I think it is a really nice book to have because what this is, uh, what his series is, is basically graduated readers that are designed to make it really easy to, like, you can just open the book, which is entirely in Latin, open to the first chapter, and if you know English, you will be able to read the first chapter. It is so graduated that... You know, the Latin text is something extremely easy for you to read. It explains all the vocabulary in the margins with pictures and all this other kind of stuff. And again, the book is written entirely in Latin, but it is such, it is so well designed that you can actually, you know, begin reading just from it. Now, I don't necessarily recommend just using this book. I think you should have a more traditional grammar book that, you know, explains grammatical points uh, to look at simultaneously, but I find it, uh, Lingua Latina Per Se Illustrata is really nice for, um, you know, just sort of practicing reading and acquiring the language more naturalistically, uh, so that's something to look into. And there are also audio recordings for at least the f first book 
Um, you can definitely find them on torrents. You might be able to find them. There might be some place where like they're officially selling them, but you should check those out as well. So anyway, there are other reasons to learn Latin, but those are just the ones that popped into my head, you know, at first. But I strongly recommend it. If you have any questions about it, you can feel free to ask. You should learn Latin and then see where it takes you. Maybe it might take you to learn Spanish and French and Italian uh, because those will be extremely easy once you learn Latin. It may take you to learn other ancient languages like ancient Greek, Gothic, uh, Sanskrit, all the other Indo-European languages um, that Latin is also useful for. Uh, it may take you to, you know, do stuff in linguistics. Either way, Latin is the best starting point for a whole bunch of different things that you don't even expect. You don't even, you might not even expect Latin will give you something, but it's one of those things that I discovered and I am continually, you know, reaping the benefits of learning it. So anyway, that's all I'm going to have to say in this video and I will see you guys next time.